Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome to the next to the Admirals Trading Spotlight webinar series. Great to have you here with me uh, today. I hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. If you can let us know, that's always a uh, that's always a great start. And uh, you know, if you're watching us here today, as I said, you're very welcome. Okay, you can put your questions into the uh, chat box. If you're watching this later on uh, demand on the uh, Admirals YouTube channel, then uh, that you. Great. Hope you enjoy the uh, the content. Make sure to subscribe. Okay. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you find the uh, content useful, or even if you don't like it, thumbs down is fine. Okay. We appreciate all the feedback that uh, we get. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, you know trading supply and demand for beginners, uh, and it's part two. Basically, we uh, <clears throat> we did the first session. I think it's about four to six weeks ago. Um, that. Recording is up in the Admiral's YouTube channel, so uh, be sure to go and watch that. Okay, if you if you've missed that, we are going to have a little recap as part of it today. But um, that's what we're going to be uh, focusing on: you know, trade news and supply and demand. And in particular, I'm going to be sharing just like one very simple setup, okay, that you can utilize to to help you in terms of making uh, in terms of making trading with supply and demand a little bit more mechanical, a little bit more uh, a little bit more focused. Uh, as we say here at Admirals, we appreciate that uh, we have a broad range of experience for the people who join us for our sessions, from complete beginners to you know very advanced traders. Um, you're all very welcome here today. Hopefully, you'll all gain something you know to be able to take away and help utilize in your uh, own particular trading. Uh, and I also recognize that even though this is the English webinar, you know we have a, a truly global audience that join us, and uh, you know you really are very welcome. It's great to have you all here. We here at Admirals hope that you're all safe and well wherever you might be in the world and with everything that is going on in the world at this particular uh, moment. So without further ado, shall we switch across to the uh, charts and uh, the, the slides and actually have a talk about supply and demand trading. So just uh, bear with us a moment. Let's uh, let's bring this up here if I, uh, if I can. Let's just bear with me a second. We'll bring this all up. Here we go. <clears throat> Super. As I said, hope you can uh, hear me, hope you can see me, um, hope you can see the slides. Great to have you here, Vincenzo. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to see you here joining us. I'll just maybe move this out of the way to make it a little bit easier for us all to see. But yeah, trading using supply and demand. Pardon you. Okay, so uh, as I said, we covered the first part of it a few weeks ago. We'll do a quick recap today, but it was we're going to build upon that. Uh, and as I said, just focus on one or two particular, well, particularly one setup that we can actually utilize, all right, uh, in that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, all right, remember, Admirals, they are a Fox and CFD broker, all right, with uh, a global presence and local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of uh, regulatory environments, providing competitive uh, prices and spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing you to engage with markets on uh, both the MT4 and the MT5 platform. If you have any questions about that, please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. You can also uh, follow the uh, Admiral's Telegram channel there if you want something a little bit more up to date content, a little bit more uh, news, uh, uh, sort of up to date news. You'll find there it is, as my uh, wonderful uh, uh, colleague there, Nastia, has uh, just basically pinged up there and the chat box you can find out you can see our uh, the link there so be sure to sort of you know, subscribe to that lots of good stuff comes out there and as i said it's a little bit more time sensitive in terms of the content you'll see uh, sort of shown on there so what we're going to talk today about today when it comes to supply and demand trading not unsurprisingly as it's part two i'll do a very quick recap of part one we'll talk about identifying trading zones of interest you know the supply and demand zones We'll look, uh, have a chat about what setups work well in those zones, and then we'll talk to you, finish you up with uh, one specific setup. And then, if we have time, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll switch across to the live charts and have a little look there as uh, as well. So, plenty for us to uh, to, to talk about and get uh, to sort of get stuck into. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Paul. I've uh, traded for uh, many years, traded for funds and for uh, other clients. Uh, primarily, I look to trade FX indices, commodities. That tends to be my bog. Uh, and then basically what I look to do is for uh, longer term trending, I tend to be a trend trader. And for short intraday trading, I tend to be a reversion, uh, sort of a reversal trader. So, <clears throat> you know, what we uh, uh, 
talked about in the, uh, the previous session was about how lots of people had heard about trading using supply and demand. But what we wanted to do was to be able to sort of just talk about, well, actually, how do we really, how do we really sort of, you know, focus down and make that much, much more, uh, um, a much more sort of, you know, <clears throat> mechanical way for us to actually operate, okay? How can we actually use what is a simple analysis tool to sort of start to build a uh, trading plan? In, uh, in part one, we sort of talked about that today as I said, we're going to go a little bit deeper and specifically we're going to look at you know one particular setup all right that will just make it quite uh hopefully a little bit more mechanical a little bit easier for you to be able to work uh, to understand so let's start with a little bit of a recap and, and it would probably help me here today and stuff just to understand you know um for those of you who are here in the, uh, the room with us today uh, how many of you are able to watch uh, part one with us, how many of you actually use supply and demand in your own trading? I'm always fascinated to see, you know, how, uh, how you know, our, uh, how our participants, uh, you know, are uh, engaging markets. As always, there's no right or wrong here, okay? It's no judgment. We're actually just always interested to, to hear how other traders are uh, engaging with uh, financial markets. It makes for a, a good and deep concert. Uh, Mike says, uh, yes, it was very good. Thanks, Paul. Um, that, that's Fantastic, and it's great, uh, great to have you here again, Mike. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks for that. So remember what we were talking about, okay, in part one, all right, about utilizing supply and demand. So, you know, uh, what we want to do is we want to look at uh, the chart for an area where price price has strongly shot up from it, is moved up swiftly from. So let's uh, get the old drawing tool up here. Okay, you know, we've had an area here of a bit of a congestion. And then what do we see is price actually, you can see price actually shoots up there, okay? Shoots up there. And, and this becomes, all right, this area becomes known as demand because price has risen because there is demand for that product, whatever instrument it might be, there's demand for that. And we identify that as an area of demand. There is a, you know, that is a place where buyers are likely to sort of, you know, overwhelm sellers and, you know, there to be increased demand, it's that increased demand that, you know, sort of plays a contributory fact towards price rallying up from that specific area. You know, maybe it's a support and resistance level, maybe it's a big round number, maybe it's none of those things, maybe it's just a particular area on the charts where, in fact, you know, we just see buyers out, uh, outweigh the sellers, we have demand comes in and basically price rallies up very, very fast. But, and on the flip side, all right, we talked about, you know, um, supply zones, all right, okay, uh, in there, uh, firstly, in the sense of, you know, we can identify an area on charts where, where we can see price has really, really, you know, it's really fallen away from, it's almost collapsed away from, all right, uh, and, you know, where we start identifying where those areas are, where it price has sort of kind of fallen away from, that is where we, you know, would call them a, a supply zone. Because you know there is oversupply, all right. Oversupply of product at that uh, that particular space, all right. That particular uh, part on the chart, and so price starts to fall away. And said so maybe it's a maybe it's a level of resistance. Okay, maybe it's a big round number. You know, there's you know maybe it's not none of those things. Maybe it's just an area you know on the uh, on the chart where what we find is sellers are you know outweighing the uh, the buyers, uh, and we see price moves and, and price moves away very very fast indeed and that that you know, you know once you recognize that once you see that you know on charts that's you know they're very clear those areas stand out and they start to become areas of interest for us all right so it become areas of you know where we're uh, kind of interested to see how does the market you know how will the market uh, react when it returns to those areas whether it be a supply zone or whether it be a demand zone and that can start to be the basis all right can be the basis of a simple trading plan um, for us so, you know, with that in mind, you know, from seeing that, from understanding that, you know, is, is everyone here in the room, are you happy with understanding, you know, the sort of supply and demand zones at their most base levels, okay, the most basic levels, there's more to it, you know, and as you go deeper into it, you understand it, but really what you know, want to basically be able to just confirm is that, you know, you can just, you know, understand what a supply zone is, understand what a demand zone is and, and how they look on charts. You know, as I said, a demand zone, price has just shot up, price has rallied really strongly from that area. A supply zone is where price has really collapsed. The price has made a strong move down. That's what um, that's where we've gone from. And it's just you know, it's important that you're able to sort of understand that and recognize them when you see them on charts. So what very often happens is that you know, excuse me, 
when we see these big candles, okay, when we see these absolute big candles, right, you know, what we recognize, okay, and sometimes we understand as, you know, it's all to do with uh, liquidity. As the, as the slide says, they you know, as retail traders, you know, we don't trade at a size big enough to affect the market price. Placing and exiting trades is, you know, is something we, we, you know, we don't have to think about as intensely as if you're a large, uh, large trader at an institution. You know, for large uh, institutional traders, getting in and out of trades, that can be a big problem because they're just trying to put on, you know, a really big position. And um, as it says, because the trades they place are so big, one of the primary goals of a professional trader is to get a trade placed into the market with as little impact on the market price as possible. And that means finding places in the market where there's a lot of liquidity. And a lot of the times that uh, pockets of liquidity tend to be found at places where retail traders put their stop losses. Liquidity isn't, you know, isn't hugely important. It is important to us as, let's say, private retail traders, but to an institutional trader, liquidity is everything because they may have an absolutely huge order that they need to, to get into the market. And they know that if they just basically go into the market, well, invariably what will happen is the prices will move, okay, in order to find liquidity to fill, you know, what might be, I don't know, maybe a thousand contract order that they have to put in. Because it does that, because it has to move, well, that means, you know, the, the, the financial institution, maybe it's a bank, it's a fund, whatever, maybe it's a treasury department of a big company, you know, they, in fact, invariably, you know, it costs them more, okay, if the price is always moving away from them, all right, okay, it's going to cost them more to basically get their orders filled, which means that everybody's profit margins will be squeezed, etc. So, looking for spaces and areas where, you know, where there is, might well be areas of liquidity, you know, is, is what institutional traders are looking to do. And what they find is quite often, you know, some nice deep pools of liquidity are where retail traders will be placing their stop losses. Uh, and this becomes, you know, this becomes a sort of a little bit of a cat and mouse game there between kind of private traders and institutional traders and recognizing, you know, private traders know that it's important for them to trade with stop losses, right? Because you need to manage risk first, but also it's where and how you place them starts to become important you know, and really quite relevant to you as the, as the way you do, because actually what we'll know is that, you know, it's the, uh, the big guys are looking for, you know, where those particular pools are that they can get a particular order. And, and actually, you know, when that order goes in, that is when we see the liquidity grab where price actually just rises from an area of demand or, or absolutely collapses from an area of supply. That's, you know, a big guy is just trying to effectively, basically, you know, grab liquidity to, to effectively fill the orders. So if you remember what we talked about as well is, is that as price moves, it creates swing highs and swing lows. Uh, and the extremes of these moves can be marked as, as bases just like the ones marked opposite here, okay, just let's just bring up here, drawn to. So, you know, what base is created for is they had bases created after a rally or after a drop. So what you'll see is, you know, traders, supply and demand traders talking about RBD, where we can see the market is rallied, it's based, and then it's dropped. Or alternatively, price has dropped, it is based, and then it is rallied, okay? RBD, rally, base, drop, or DBR drop, base, rally. And you'll see markets will do that. Markets will swing there, okay? And that's, you know, as I said, that becomes an interesting area for us as, you know, as traders, when we, certainly when we see, just draw, certainly when we see, you know, price in a base and then rallying very strongly away from it or in a, in a base and then dropping really rapidly from it, well, that gives us a, you know, that gives us sort of, you know, an indication of right where, where you know big orders may lay, where you know where big business is trying to basically be done, okay, in particular bases like that, as so particular areas of either you know distribution or accumulation, and what we want to do is to be able to recognise that because when price returns to that zone, there will still be a lot of orders outstanding, okay, and that outstanding orders will actually help markets, you know, give those markets a little bump, and that little bump can be a very very you know profitable and tradable opportunity for ourselves. So. That's why I said, you know, in the last session, just go away, you know, start looking at your charts, just seeing where you can identify rally-based drops, drop-based rallies. You will see them across all time frames, right? You will, you will see them, you'll recognize them. But what I would suggest is that, you know, for trading is that just start off with a, uh, you know, start off with a kind of a higher time frame to begin with, because you can, 
take a little bit of time to recognize it, take a little bit of time to work out what's going on. And from that, okay, you get a bit to take a bit of time to identify your trade setups, okay, and what do you actually need to do in order to sort of turn it into, turn that analysis into a simple trade plan that you can, uh, that you can work with. <clears throat> so that was just a very quick recap of some of the things we touched upon. As I said, if you'd like to learn more, go and find the, uh, the first video in the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel. You'll find it in there. It's House Trades, Blind Demand Zones. You'll find it in there. Lots of uh, good content in that. Along with all the other good content you see there, okay, on that Admiral's channel, you know, there's plenty of uh, plenty of stuff there, okay, plenty of great uh, pieces there for you to uh, for you to enjoy and you know, to to connect with and and to, to educate yourself with. But today, you know, in part two, we want to talk about well, you know, how do we how do we do that, okay? Well, we'll look at a further couple of simple setups at the areas of supply and demand. Very often, some traders will simply buy or sell supply and demand zones. So they will literally once they've identified a supply zone, okay, they will have basically a, you know, a short order for when price returns to it. Uh, once they've identified a demand zone, they'll just basically have a buy order to come in as price just absolutely drops to it and just they just look to do that. Uh, that is not the way I particularly like to trade supply and demand zones, all right? You know, uh, uh, others, may, others may differ, others may like to just literally simply buy or sell those supply and demand zones. That's not, that's okay. You know, I'm not saying that you can't do that, but just saying that is not really my particular way of doing it, okay? Part of this comes into um, a bigger conversation about risk sentiment, okay? About where you sit on the risk spectrum. So, you know, some people are very aggressive, okay? Very accepting of risk, or there's a very averse of risk, okay? You know, they sort of, you know, take a bit of time to, to come to terms with it. The, the truth is all of us, as human beings, as traders, we all sit somewhere on that spectrum, all right? Being very, very risk accepting or very risk averse. One of the things a good trader can do is work out as quickly as possible where they sit on it. There is no right or wrong, all right? There is no right or wrong. The only wrong there might be is that, you know, you trying to trade in a way that is different from your risk sentiment. If you're a very risk averse person, but you're trying to trade a very risk aggressive method or market, you're, you're probably gonna have troubles. You're probably gonna challenge, all right, because it's not it's not you operating in harmony with yourself. And so the quicker you can get learn to understand what you know what your own level of harmony is, the quicker you can operate effectively. So I digress a bit, but it's important because it's part of the landscape, right? It's part of the big picture that goes together towards helping us with our uh, with, a, with our trading. So as I said, when it comes to supply and demand zones, I don't like to just simply buy or sell them. Uh, what I do is, you know, I want to identify those zones, you know, I'm waiting for rejection candles to print in those zones, all right? And, you know, we talked in the last time you can utilize things like engulfing candles, pin bars, et cetera, all right? Uh, and one particular setup I like is a thing called the Valiant Trader, right? Which is just, a, uh, you know, it's just another simple variation on it, but, um, I find it can be, you know, it can be um, very focused in that it is great for our, um, great for sort of new traders to be able to sort of be almost mechanical because once they've done the analysis and identified their zones, they are simply waiting for a one simple trigger, okay? One simple trigger. And that can be very helpful for new traders. It allows them to basically just, you know, get focused on getting good at one setup rather than trying to trade, you know, 15 different, 15 different setups, okay, on the market, because invariably that just, that just overwhelms you, all right? That just overwhelms you. You never really get good at any of them. You know, what we want you to do is to, you know, get focused, okay? Get good at, like, trading one or maybe two setups. And that's what you need. That's, you know, that really can be all you need. So, if you remember, I talked about outside bars or engulfing candles. I won't go through these uh, in depth today because once again, you will find that there is plenty of uh, plenty of material, all right, in the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel that will cover this, okay, and outside bar engulfing candles. But just remember, you know, an engulfing candle is formed when the high and the low of the bar candle 
fully engulfs all right the range of the preceding one all right and it must it must include the complete engulfment okay not just the body all right some people just think oh, it just needs the body it needs to engulf completely all right they do happen infrequently they don't happen as often as things like pin bars but you know when they do they are a strong signal that a move is about to occur so, you know, there's examples there, okay? So a couple of bullish examples, a couple of bearish examples. Remember, the important thing is, is that they are completely engulfing the, the preceding candle. That's that's the key thing, okay? There's an engulfment. It's, it's, you know, the other side has stepped in, okay, and wrestled control of the market. And that's what we're looking to sort of, you know, take into consideration. That is what we're actually sort of looking to try and uh, uh, understand, okay? That's where, we're, that's where we're actually sitting and working. The other um, setup, you know, you can look at it is a, a pin bar, okay, which it has lots of, uh, you find it has lots of kind of different, um, lots of different names, okay. You can find that it will have, uh, um, it can be called pin bars, it can be high test or low test, they're called rejection candles, you'll hear them called hammers, shooting stars, etc. I'm not too fussed about how you wish to label it, all right. That is, that's pretty, you know, that's, you know, by the by, so to speak, okay? That is by the by. What I am kind of interested in is, you know, that you understand what goes into a specific proper pin bar, okay? And namely what we should have for a good pin bar is an open and a close within the range of the previous bar. The wick, all right, this importantly, the wick should be two to three times the length of the body. We wanna see a long nose protruding from all the other bars and good pin bars, they will stick out and are very obvious, right? That's what we'll see. And, you know, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, it doesn't take much before you can actually sit on and uh, looking at a particular chart and then invariably just recognizing and understanding, you know, where is, you know, where are the pin bars? And it becomes very clear to understand, you know, where we, where you can see them, what can, you know, where they stand out and, and actually how you can, uh, how you can basically work with them to, to, to utilize them in your trading. But, we're going to, you know, we're going to go into a little bit more depth in terms of specifics regarding uh, supply and demand. But you know, what we want to do is just show particular uh, particular setups that um, that can work for us. I know, you know, there's some examples of uh, pin bars that are quite easy to to see and to recognise. As I say, a good pin bar should leap off the chart at you. Okay, you don't need to sort of just try and uh, you know try and sort of. Um, uh, skewer them, all right. In order to make them look good, you know, good ones will leap off the chart. You know, they, you know, they are they are pretty obvious, which is a blessing and a curse. Okay, but um, when you're a new trader, what is the blessing is to being able to recognise them. So, let's in particular have a chat about a thing called the valiant trade. Okay, you know, it's uh, and that's what we're going to sort of talk about here. And namely. That, namely, that once we have identified and drawn in specific supply and demand zones, which we'll have a little look at in the live markets, once they're there in place, then we can look at numerous tactics or setups. You know, it just looks at like engulfing from candle pin bars to enable us to enter the market as a trigger. But one of them is effectively is you know it's a thing called the valiant, which is actually really it's a key day reversal in a strike zone. Okay, and the strike zone is just another name for whether it be a supply zone or a demand zone, all right? It's a, it's a zone at which, if you know if you know your sporting analogies, all right, strike zone in like baseball, it's a, it's, a, yeah, it's a space where, you know, where you're gonna take a swing, right? You know, in baseball, you're gonna take a swing of the ball. In, in trading, okay, you're gonna take a, you're gonna take the, the, the trade if it sets itself up for you. Darshan said, why are you so thirsty? It's a good question. Uh, I think it's the uh, air conditioning in my room uh, or my office here. It's a little bit too warm. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit too warm. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite, uh, quite thirsty getting through the water today. But uh, thank you for keeping the luck out for me there, Darshan. I yeah, much appreciate it and stuff. Uh, and no, I'm not in Thailand. I wish I was. And um, that's where, uh, that's where my colleague uh, Marcus he gets to go. Uh, me, not so, uh, not so much. I think it's just, uh, I'm just in a warm office today. So anyway, more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about trading. And as I said, let's talk about the, the Valiant trade, right? That's what, um, that's what we want to, to particularly sort of uh, uh, um, focus on. So as I said, it's quite a simple setup. Once we've identified valid supply and demand zones, then you can wait for price to retrace to those strikes. And, 
and, and be ready, okay? And that's be, you know, be prepared and be ready to actually sort of look at, utilize them as a place where I want to do my business, okay? This is a, it's a place where I, you know, I hone my focus to look for specific setups, um, specific setups there, okay? So, you know, um, what I have here, and I'll show you here, but just whilst, whilst I've got it on this particular chart, is what you'll find is that what I sort of tend to, you know, colour my uh, sort of supply zones, okay? Uh, you know, my bearish uh, sort of strike zones, it is a kind of like a very light pink red okay, on my charts. So that, you know, because sometimes these zones could be for, sometimes I'm, not, I'm going to show you like an example, but it could be for years, okay? And so it's when price comes back to that area, you know, it just helps me recognize that as price comes up to this area, this is an area where, you know, I'm, I'm going to be looking to be, you know, to be bearish, to be a, a seller. And on the flip side, all right, on the flip side, you know, I will color also my kind of bullish demand zones, okay, uh, just a very, very pale green on the charts. And the reason being for that is when I see price coming down to it, it just reminds me when price comes back to that particular zone, it's just reminds me, you know, here I'm a buyer. And this is where I'm going to be a buyer. And that's that kind of, that helps me, all right? It's very simplistic, okay? But I found for me when it comes to trading that actually, you know, supply, um, just keeping it as simple as possible, it helps me, helps me stop me from overanalyzing, helps me stop me from overthinking about it, okay? I actually just want to be able to basically bank. That's the zone where I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a swing at the market. Once I have my trigger, okay, once I have my, preferred pitch shall we say we're in like the kind of sporting baseball analogies this is where i'm going to take my swing okay and that's that's what we're going to talk about here so once price okay makes one of our you know a uh, bearish or bullish strike zone so a bearish one would be a supply and uh, a supply zone you know a bullish one would be a demand zone then what i'm doing is i'm, I'm waiting for price to create a key day reversal pattern in the intended direction of our trade. So remember, I was just saying that you know when I have you know if I if price is coming down into a, a green um, rectangle green zone, I know that that is you know my my it's a bullish a place where I want to be bullish, place where it's a demand zone, place where I'm looking to buy, and it also means that you know I'm looking for you know just a very simple trigger a KDR key day reversal pattern, okay, just in order to do that, and that's what uh, that's what I'm specifically focusing now. A little trader's edge that I will uh, offer to you and, and show to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that is a case of you know I'm I will identify the the zone on one time frame, and then I tend to look for the let's call it the trigger, all right, the, the KDR trigger on a lower time frame. So you know, as I'm going to show you a couple of live examples of, you know, I might be looking at the monthly chart. And actually, it might be the weekly, the daily, the four hourly, where I actually look to, 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 to find my triggers, okay? That works very well. It's not to say that you can, you know, you can't find, you know, you know have a monthly zone and, you know, and a monthly trigger or you know, even like a four hour zone and a four hour trigger. Yes, you most certainly can. I just find that personally, if I if I identify the uh, the zone on a higher time frame, I just find that I get a, a quicker, earlier entry, all right, when I look down the other uh, time frames, because I know... Because I know exactly what I'm looking for, you know, I know exactly what I'm looking for, okay, and that helps me, all right, it helps me because it becomes almost mechanical, almost mechanical, all right, I don't need to do that too much subjectivity, there's no need for, you know, huge amounts of discretion, if I have a KDR in a zone, that's my trade, okay, and I found, you know, uh, and I think I've talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is that I found that having a simple plan that you can execute well is better than having a very complex plan, that is hard to execute or unravels at the kind of, you know, unravels at the, at the kind of a, uh, you know, a, a, in a, in a dynamic moving, uh, in a dynamic moving market. So if you don't know what a KDR is, uh, once again, I would just go and actually have a look at the uh, Admiral's uh, YouTube channel, because you'll find that there is a huge amount in there. Okay. And I've done a few videos on, on trading KDRs. But KDR, all right, key reversal, right? People will call it key day reverse. It doesn't have to be on the daily time frame, all right? It could be on any time frame. You will find it happen on all time frames. They they happen rarely, okay? Uh, but they're very good at signaling the end of a trend or the flip of a trend, right? Not unsurprisingly, the higher the time frame, the more validity you have, uh, and it basically helps provide clear proof that the previous trend is either over or it is close to its end, all right? And that's what, uh, that's what we're particularly looking at. And this here, this actually, this basically, bang, 
that uh, that candle there is a KDR, okay? So um, it's a key reversal candle, and you can see actually, as you know, as most price are basically been drifting down. That was the uh, that was the end, all right, of the trend. It went sideways before it went before it went up. So. They, uh, they don't happen as often as we would like them, but when we do happen, it's quite clear what's going on. There's a, there is a change in the psychology of the market. It is flipped. And with that, we are looking to basically, you know, to utilize that as our trigger into the new, into the new trend. So, you know, what does it, what is it? Well, it, you know, it's a sharp reversal pattern that occurs at the end of a trend. In an uptrend, all right, prices will, you know, trade above the previous day's close. All right, make a new high. And this is the important thing, okay? Trade above it, make a new high, and then close below the previous day's low. This is this is important, okay? So in this particular example here, you, know, you can see price spin in an absolute, you know, great, fabulous trend there. Hits that this is actually the 200 period moving average. On that session on that day, we can see price open, price trades higher. That's the thing, okay? Price trades, it makes a new high, but then rolls over rolls over and the important thing is it closes below the previous day's low right? i might look at just by a mere smidge in there okay but it has it's closed beneath the previous day's low and that's because the psychology is completely switched all right the market is flipped right and then what we can see is bang you can see the basic price rolls away from that it's a very simple setup and i like it because it's very mechanical you know if a, a key reversal either happens or it doesn't happen okay it's not basically is not you know there's no subjectivity in it you know it, it has to push to a new high close beneath the low of the previous candle right there's precision in that okay and i like that in my trading i don't necessarily want that much ambiguity i want i want is to basically to have very simple clear defined rules that basically allow me to just basically bang that's my trade that's my trade that's my trade all right uh, in a downtrend you know as it says price opens you know price will trade below the previous day's close make a new low all right and here's the important thing but reverse and close higher than the previous day's high all right that's just showing you that the, the bulls have stepped in they have wrestled control of the market and they are pushing it upwards again then we are likely to go upwards for the uh, for the next few sessions as it says there the greater the price range and volume the key reversal day you know the, the more reliable signal that's absolutely true you know you will you'll find these printing on you know one minute charts and on one monthly charts right they don't happen as often as we would like but you know when they do it's it's well worth taking uh, it's well worth taking a uh, note of okay and, and being able to sort of uh, um being able to sort of you know just uh, work with that okay so uh, uh, you know to basically look out look out for them there so once we have identified a valiant setup, which is a key reversal in, you know, in a uh, in our strike zone, what we're looking to do is we want to set an entry order, okay, at the, the break of the candle, uh, set our stop loss below the low, and then set a target, and here's a good target, perhaps three to six are away, okay, depending upon your risk profile. And um, I have a little slightly different one for myself, but, you know, for new traders here, all right, you know, Entry order at the break of the candle, stop loss beneath the low, target three to six R. And to begin with, what I would suggest is going for three R. Okay. So in this particular case, hopefully you can see because it's a green, you know, there's clearly I've drawn in a green zone there from a previous uh, time. Price has been trading down. Okay. Puts in a pin bar, which, you know, we've just talked about. Some people would just literally, you know, be very happy to trade off that. Okay. And that's fair enough. But what we have is a couple of candles later, we have a, a basic true bullish key reversal. We can see price trades and pushes to a new low before reversing, carry on all the way up and closing, importantly, closing above the high of the previous day's candle again. And so in that case, you know, it not only is it a key day reverse, but it's also a proper engulfing candle as well. And then you can see for yourself that actually price, you know, for the next few days, or also next next two weeks, rallied its way up. All right, and that's that's what we're that's what we're particularly looking for. As I said, they don't happen as often as we would like, but this is where, as I said, you know, if you're trading them on higher time frames, you can go down time frames, right, to to take a look. Okay, you might be on the monthly, but you're looking at the weekly, the daily, the four hourly. You know? So that's what I tend to do. Maybe you're a day, you know, you like to do the day charts. Okay. In which case, you know, I'll probably be looking at kind of the, you know, the sort of the four hour and the one hour uh, charts to identify where, you know, where I get key day reversals in the direction of, you know, where I want to trend, you know, in those particular zones, those sort of kind of daily zones that we see there. 
as I said, it's a it's quite a, it's quite a simple plan. All right, it's quite a simple plan. You know, and that's that's yeah, that's the way we like them. That's the way we like them. So I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you, you know, a really um, a really major one, a really strange one. So you know, <clears throat> in terms of you know how sometimes you know it, it, you know it could be it could be years all right you know it could be years before you come out i'm not necessarily suggesting you should always be like this but i just wanted to rather than just show you a very pretty very you know clear cut opportunity i just wanted to show you one that you know is is a bit scruffy and a bit takes time and you know is and is is can be what markets are really like okay so this is the weekly chart of the uh, the us dollar against the uh, the canadian dollar um what we've done a long time ago is, is basically identified, you know, it's a bullish demand zone because basically the you know, price is coming down, but then basically price shot up from here and then continue to show shot, continue to shoot up there. Okay. Continue for the whole of that year, started to move up there very, very um, strongly breaks, uh, breaks, you know, the kind of previous resistance, previous um, structure levels. All right. And, you know, and so what we can do is from that, from that area, okay. From that base, right. And remember this was basically drop, base rally all right what we can see what we can do is basically let me just clear this down a little bit you know just using the the rectangle tool on the one of the meta trader platforms okay whether it be four or five and then just basically just projecting forward just drawing it forward okay to actually you know to identify well you know this is an area of demand remember we talked right at the start about about you know the big guys right big institutional traders all right you know they can't you know they they, they want to find places to do their business okay there's probably you know big big buy orders there and what we expect is you know it probably didn't fill let's say let's say you know your, your man at your institutions put you know a thousand contract ordering because he's got to fill a, a big big you know big deal for one of his own one of his own um clients well you know maybe maybe only 600 of those contracts actually got filled all right at that particular uh, sort of zone that particular price so the first so when the price comes back to there all right well then basically you know it start to fill those orders again okay and that's what we see the, the the bump the move from people might say you know as private traders saying well you know crikey i you know i would you know i would never have orders sat there for you know for a couple of years waiting to to get uh, triggered and you're probably right, you probably wouldn't. And that's okay, because remember, you know, the institutional traders, are, they're, they're trading in a very different way from you. They've got a def, very different timeline, okay? You might be looking for a trade that lasts 20 minutes. They may, some of them might have a trade that lasts 20 years, okay, for sort of like big pension funds, et cetera. So, you know, you can't take into account every everybody else's you know, timeline. You just have to recognize that everyone else's will be different from yours, and that can still be a big beneficial help to you. So... Hopefully you can see that uh, that you know that, that actually price price bounced when it got here. Price first time price came back to that kind of area, that demand area. What did it do? It basically bounced off it quite bounced off it quite strongly, didn't it? You know, and that you know that was a uh, that was a trading opportunity for us. And actually, what happened is, yeah, you know, as we look at the the price action, okay, we go down go down a time frame. Is that actually as price came down into it, a bit like we were saying before price puts in actually a double bottom that also has a key reversal all right it's a key reversal in that kind of bullish demand zone and actually what you can see is price fired its way up from there okay price ran very very nicely indeed it's a good little it's a nice little uh, nice little particular runner from there uh, you know and what you, you can look at in terms of you know uh you know where you can get your entry where you can get your stop loss where's the target i probably traded that a bit more aggressively than than you would Right, that's and that's okay. Okay, remember I, I've done this for years. All right, you're just new, but remember what we we're saying. Actually, really, what you want to be looking at is you know a break of the uh, the candle when price rallies, stop loss beneath the low, and then you know a target. I would be saying, suggesting maybe three R to be to begin with. Okay, just a three R target. And if you can do that, um, you know you'll 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 have some success with trading. All right, okay, you'll have some success. The the frustration will be is that you know not as many of these setups show up. As you would want, certainly if you're, if you're using the kind of the longer the longer time frames. So, all right. So remember, you know what you're looking at is identify those valid order blocks. All right, those valid strike zones. Those are valid supply and demand zones. Okay, that's what you're looking for on your monthly, weekly, daily, four hourly chart. Okay, you don't necessarily need to do all of that. Maybe you're just a long term trader. Okay, and actually only just want to want to do that on the monthly and the weekly chart, and that's absolutely fine. 
when price returns to those zones, have a look for a KDR in a lower time frame. That's what we're interested in. All right, when price returns, look for a, a key reversal in a lower time frame. That's that's you know that's where it can help you. Set your entry order for the break of the candle. All right, target three to six. You know, reward to risk, but you know mostly start three. Uh, and you know, it, for those of you looking for a longer target, you can stop movie stops break even. Okay, at the uh, what I would call the fib expansion two six one. So, uh, your task from today's session, then, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, go away and look through some of your favourite trading instruments. Try and identify possible supply and demand zones. Also, identify the drop base rally, rally base drop. Can you actually see that quite clearly on those markets? Look at how price reacted, all right, when it returned to those specific areas. Just you know, just do that. It'll be interesting. Did it move away from those areas on the back of printing? a variation of a rejection candle. Was there a valiant setup on lower time frame? So, you know, maybe you saw the price, you know, came back to a zone and it bounced off it. But actually, if you looked at lower time frames, was there the opportunity to see that there was a valid setup, namely a key reversal already in that strike zone? You know, it, it's 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 simple and it's, you know, it's, it's, it is quite simple, but as I keep saying, a simple plan executed well will 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 be will be everything else. So you know, um, it, just before we uh, we've got a couple of minutes, we'll switch to the the live charts. But uh, you know, supply and demand and conclusions. Supply and demand are areas of interest to traders. There are zones where prices previously made made very strong advances or declines. We're interested in how price responds when it returns to those zones. In particular, we enjoy searching for rejection channels at supply and demand zones. That is the basis of a simple trading plan. Have a little look out for value and trade setups and let's look at live markets. We've got a couple of minutes. We'll have a little look and see what's going on there and stuff and what we can what we can particularly focus on. You know, if you want to uh, contact us, you can do, okay? You'll find, you know, contact us at global at admiralmarkets.com there. You can see there. Uh, and also, as always, you know, as I said, plenty of content on the Admirals Global and also on the Facebook. Also, just a quick reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that there will be a feedback form sent to you after the end of this session. We really appreciate it. If you just take a couple of moments just to click on the buttons, okay, answer the questions and stuff, and that will uh, really help us. Okay, we really appreciate it that you would uh, do that. I hope you find it useful. Just give us a minute, okay? We'll just a moment. We'll just switch across the lives and see what you know. If I can show you one or two examples, okay, on the, on maybe in the longer terms, that will actually just show you. Hopefully, sort of you know. Um, uh, give you a little bit of an idea about the, the value of trade. So just uh, just bear with us a moment. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, let's, let's do um, one or two here. Pan against the yeah, Okay. I just want to show one or two examples, scruffy examples in particular. Um, so, uh, bang, drawing here. This is pan against yen. This is the monthly chart, okay? Uh, you know, and what we were interested in a while back is that, you know, having price having price having dropped, it kind of based, and then hopefully you can see it rallied quite quite strongly there from, from around about, from about around about 125 up to about 150, 155, you know, it's a good move. So, you know, what we had there was an area there, base that becomes, you know, our uh, base where we want to, to look at this is a demand zone because price, you know, every time it comes back down there, it rallies away from it. And so we were interested when price returned to it, okay, a couple of years ago to see, you know, what actually happened. Now we can see, of course, in hindsight, it just bounced up there. But when we start to look at the kind of lower time frames, we get a quick look and an insight into, well, you know, was there a valiant trade there? Was there, an upper, was there a particular opportunity um, was a particular opportunity there that we could work with. So let's, you know, that was, as I said, that was the, the monthly chart. Uh, and then if we go down to the weekly chart, hopefully you can, this was the, the weekly chart here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. And actually what we can see here is, I hope, is that, you know, we knew this, you know, remember this was a strike zone. This was a, a zone that, you know, is, it's green because I know I want to be a buyer to it when it comes back to it. You know, it took a while to, Price came, you know, price came careering into the zone, went sideways, so it basically dropped it base. And then what do we have here? Well, you know, we have a 
big key reversal okay price it price it open price it traded lower all right lower than the last couple of days then it swung around and most importantly it closed beneath the high of the previous candles a key reversal in a zone trades on all right the trade uh, you know the trade is on ladies and gentlemen that's that's what we're just trying to that's what we're just trying to understand you know it required a little bit of patience require a little bit of you know uh, work on it but hopefully you can see that you know from uh, you know from our order there okay from our order there what we can see is price actually just went up quite nicely there didn't it for for what was what to august into december so you know for you know almost like three four months okay they're just all the way up there you know and, and it hit a a natural target of the 200 period moving average okay that becomes kind of interesting right price had just done that and that that i think was you know uh, that i think was a really nice uh you know a nice move there right absolutely yeah, nicely uh, nicely set up um i wanted to show one on uh, a relevant one of uh of uh, um on sterling at the moment so just uh, just bear with us let's bring this one up and the last one here so bang yeah here we go here we go so so pound against US dollar, it's uh, it's been an interesting one. All right, okay, no, no, no surprise there, but yeah, it has been uh, an interesting one. Uh, and what we saw here was it's been the tool is that you know, and price of price of had rallied, it had based, and then it had dropped, hasn't it? Rally based drop, uh, and what we saw is you know price moved away from that area really strongly for about the next six weeks uh, and what we had then was a base there that basically we could sort of project forward to the uh you know into the future to see what happened when it returned and and it returned okay earlier uh, last year when it was also price was pivoting around 140 itself okay so we've got you know it's coming back up to that level and also that level just happens to be a big round number okay there's that kind of that kind of helps a great deal so we go down onto the that was the monthly chart. If we go down to the weekly chart, okay. Well, hopefully you'll be able to quickly see how it kind of played, uh, how it particularly played out. Okay, just you can see here we go. Bang. On the weekly chart, you know, there's not much there, is there? You know, there's there's a pin bar. Some people might have traded off that, okay. But there's not there's not really you know a massive key reversal there. You might think, oh well, you know, Paul, there's nothing there. Remember what I was saying, you want to go down a couple of, you know, a couple of lower time frames. Uh, and when you do that, well, then, you know, the picture changes, you know, a little bit. Okay, we can see that was the first one. Uh, and then what happened here was, we had, let me just move this. Bang. What we had is, you know, on the daily chart, price rallied back up into that area. Uh, and then here we go, you know, this printed here. What happened was it printed, you know, a bearish key reversal. Price had basically pushed to a new high, fallen over, rolled over, and basically collapsed and closed lower than the low of the previous candle. That okay, that has been the high in the uh, that's been the high you know in the basically pound against US dollar for for a while now. Okay, because what we can see is if I just zoom out a little bit, is that 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 key reversal there in the bearish um, zone. Was the high, the absolute high of the candle for the last, well, you know, that was basically September, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. So you, you know, that was effectively from, well, actually, it's early enough from from May, from May till today. Okay, nearly, you know, ten months or so there, ten months there, price. That was the the absolute top, and price just, you know, price just fell away from it very, very nicely there. So I hope that helps you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate as always, you know, there's trying to cram in as much as possible. Uh, you know, and try and share with you as much as we can. But I uh, appreciate that, you know, we uh, run out of time to, today. But as I said, uh, I hope that you found that useful. I hope that's given you some insight. There'll be a little feedback form that comes through at the end of the session. Uh, as always, I wish you the very best of success with your uh, own trading, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Right. And, uh, you know, what I, I hope for is that, you know, uh, I hope that we'll uh, see you at the, uh, the next session, which will be on uh, Wednesday. Have yourself a, a great rest of the trading week, great weekend. Uh, and I look forward to, to seeing you soon. Take care and trade well, everybody. Cheers.